Today, me and Tucker are going to show you how to easily overwinter peppers. Plant them once and harvest year after year after year. Let's go! Most people think peppers are annuals, meaning you plant them from seed, they grow, you get a harvest from them, you save the seed, then the plant dies, and you do that whole procedure the next year. But peppers are actually perennials, meaning they'll produce year after year. The problem around here, where I live, is that the cold weather will kill them. But we can prevent this. Today I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing we want to do is select plants that produced well, that are healthy, and have little to no disease or pest issues. Look at these plants right here. Look how well this one did, and how well it's producing. This one over here. These are the ones we're going to overwinter. This Ajvarsky looking really nice. And then check out this hot paper lantern pepper over here. So we're gonna select these plants to overwinter because they look fantastic and they're the ideal candidates. I did the same process last year of overwintering peppers and it worked out really well. Ideally, you want to do this with peppers planted in containers, but I'll show you how to do it with peppers planted in the ground as well. The best time to start overwintering your peppers is a few weeks before the first expected frost. What we want to do is we want to make sure we're starting to overwinter them before any of the cold weather starts to damage the plants, but we also want to make sure we're getting the most out of the year and allow the most peppers on the plants to finish. Once the temperatures start getting into the mid 40s at night, that's a good time to start preparing your peppers for overwintering. If you have a greenhouse like I do and you're growing your peppers in pots, what you can do is when the nights start to get cold, you could bring your potted plants into the greenhouse and then take those back out during the day when it gets nicer out. This will allow you to extend your season more and wait a little later to start overwintering your peppers. Now that we've chosen our healthiest plants, let's start harvesting all these peppers before we start cutting the plant back because we're going to be pruning it back a lot. Let's cut all these peppers off. Harvest all these ones. This is the Ajvarsky pepper. I really like this variety and I want to save this plant. Look how beautiful the peppers are. It was a good producer, really healthy plant. And Tuck even likes these ones. So it's always a good sign, right boy? We'll let him snack on that. I'll cut the rest of the plant back. So just a few more green peppers on here. If I wasn't showing you how to do this, I could have let this pepper plant go a little longer by putting it in the greenhouse and allow some more of these to finish, but I just wanna show you the exact process. Now, let's get to the extreme part. If you're a new gardener, this is gonna be hard to see, but it's also going to be hard to do. Not that it's gonna be difficult, but it's gonna be hard to watch because we're gonna to have to prune this plant back a lot. You'll see. Before I start the pruning though, to avoid any potential for getting any disease issues, I'm just gonna use some isopropyl alcohol and dip my pruners into there. Just like this. Now, we're going to be pruning this pepper back a lot. We're gonna be removing all the leaves as well. We're doing this for a couple reasons. First of all is we don't want any pests hiding underneath these leaves anywhere and then bringing those pests inside and then as this plant overwinters, the pests are just feeding on the plant. We don't want that at all. Another thing is we want this plant to go into dormancy. We're not looking to produce peppers inside. We just want the plant to kind of just wait and hang around till the spring comes. And then when spring comes, we'll bring it back outside and it will just explode into growth. Let's get to the pruning. What we want to do is prune right above a node. So a node is where the leaves, the buds, and everything emerges from, all the growth. We want to make sure we're leaving a few nodes so in spring, the plant can grow back from these nodes. We're going to cut the plant back a lot though. Right here, we've got a node. You see leaves are growing out of it. We're gonna prune it back right above it. You can see right here, just like this. Not too close to the node that it causes any damage, but this is where next year the plant will grow back from. Over here, you notice that the plant grows up and it kind of wise from here. We wanna keep this node right here. This is where the plant's gonna grow back from in the spring, so we're gonna cut right above it, just like that. We wanna cut a lot of this plant back. Next, we have a node here and we have a node down here. We could cut either one back. I'm gonna cut this one back up here. And you'll notice again, the node is where all the leaves are growing from and that's where the regrowth will happen in the spring. So let's cut it right there. So we've got the plant down a lot. I'm gonna, I have another node right here. I'm gonna cut right above it. And then I'm gonna remove all these leaves because we are essentially, again, forcing this plant into dormancy. We don't want it to grow over the winter. Some people will cut it back all the way down to some of the nodes down here, but I like keeping this shape a little bit so when it regrows, it has a decent shape already to it. 
here it is. This is what the plant looks like when it's finished being pruned. It may not look like much, but it's going to be nice starting in spring from a plant like this to regrow, as opposed to starting a whole new plant from seed. If you want, you could take this pot and bring it inside now, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is, take it easy boy, this guy is uh, always looking for some fresh peppers. What we're going to do is we're going to repot this and we're going to do that for a few different reasons. First off, there could be pests lurking in the soil. We don't want to bring those into the house. Then they come out and just like attack the pepper plant and cause unneeded stress. Another thing is if we don't have a lot of space inside, we're going to be able to transplant this plant into a smaller pot. And I'll show you how we're going to do that right now. So let's get this detached. This is just what I was using for staking because this pepper plant got heavy. I use these uh, plastic clips for tomatoes, peppers, all different plants. It works, they work so fantastic. So let's do this, take this out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this plant out, we're gonna shake all the soil off, we're gonna wash the roots off to make sure we get rid of any kind of pests that might be hidden in our soil. And then we're gonna start with fresh soil. So let's just get this plant out. I don't wanna cause too much stress to it, so I'm just gonna be gentle. I don't want to just yank it out. Whew. A lot of nice roots in there. So first I'm just going to shake as gently as I can. We don't want to lose the roots, we just want to lose the dirt. Be really gentle with this process because it's super stressful for the plant. <laughs> Got some dirt on tuck. This guy's staying a little too close. <laughs> he loves it though. Okay, and now I'm gonna use some water. And you might be thinking this is gonna be really stressful for the plant, but it's okay because we cut so much back at the top of the plant, so there's not as much plant that the roots need to support we're still gonna have a nice balance between the top growth and root ratio. Got this filled up with water, now I'm just gonna dip the roots in a little bit to loosen up some of the soil. We're gonna dunk these roots one more time, but before I do that, I don't need all these roots, especially this long. Since I don't have much top growth and we're trying to put this into dormancy, we're gonna take some of these roots back a little bit. So we'll just take some roots about equal length here, just like this. Give them a bit of a haircut. This will help me clean out all the dirt from it better. And then it'll also help with the repotting. We don't want any roots twisting and getting tangled. That looks good just like that. Now we'll dip it back in here to get the rest of the dirt off. The roots look nice. We almost got all the dirt off. We pruned them back a little bit. Now, before we pot this, we're gonna do take one more precautionary step. We're going to dip this in a solution to make sure any of the soft-bodied insects or anything that's left in there get killed off. We're gonna be using all organic stuff. What we're going to do is use this five gallon bucket and I've got two gallons of water in. I'm gonna add one more gallon. So we're gonna do three gallons and I'm going to add in here a tablespoon of this insect killing soap, this safer soap, it works really good. I use this even for like my aphids and a lot of the soft bodied insects, this stuff's really nice. I'm also gonna use a tablespoon of neem oil. So this has the azadiracta in it, which is really good stuff too. So this is the cold pressed neem oil. So we're gonna add a tablespoon of each. I don't have a tablespoon, so I'm just gonna add three teaspoons because uh, three teaspoons is equal to one tablespoon. One, two, three, tablespoons of that. And the safer soap will help mix the neem oil in. One, two, three. Then I'm just gonna add my next gallon of water. This is always how I measure my gallons. I just get an old gallon jug and then fill it up a few different times. So I'm gonna mix this, I'm gonna pour this in. It'll help mix things up a little bit. Then I'll even use my hand a bit. Looks good like that. Now I'm gonna take my roots, my plant I meant, with the cleaned roots, and we're gonna dip this into our bucket and let it sit there just for a couple of minutes. Just to let everything get killed off. It's okay if the stem and everything goes in there too. It's actually not a bad thing because we even do this. 
We'll let that sit just there for a minute or two. While we're doing that, we're going to prepare our next pot. Since we pruned back a lot of those roots, we're going, to, we're going to be able to put it in just a gallon pot. This is one that I just recycled, but what we want to make sure we're doing is using good quality potty mix that's clean. The last thing we want is potty mix that has bugs and stuff in it because we just spent all the time making sure we don't have any fungus gnats or anything. So we're going to take some of our potting mix. I'm using the Happy Frog. And this is good clean stuff. So I'm going to put just some at the bottom, get it all prepped. We allow them to soak for a minute. Look nice and a little bit soapy there, which is okay. Now we're going to take this and transplant it to its new home. We do, it's not going to be growing a lot in here. It's going to just be kind of sitting dormant. So I'm just going to do just like that. We got some soil at the bottom. Let the roots kind of spread. We don't want them getting tangled. Then I'm just going to take some soil and just fill it around just like this. Just like that. Push it down just a little bit. Looks good. But in the spring for this, we're going to be repotting it again into a bigger pot. This is just to help us save space and to make sure that we're not bringing any fungus gnats into the, into the house or actually in the garage where we're gonna store it. That looks nice. I'm gonna gently just water it in just so the roots can kind of get set in place. We don't wanna over water this. We don't want it to be uh, like soaking wet. We just want it to be damp. So let's just water that in a little bit. This process that I just showed you, I did it with potted plants, but it's essentially the same for in-ground plants. Just make sure when you're digging out those in-ground plants, you kind of go as deep as you can, and you want to lift out the whole plant instead of just yanking it up from the stem. But just be gentle with it, and it should be okay because you're going to be pruning back a lot of the top like we did here, and you're also going to be pruning back some of the roots. So you should be safe, then just pot it, and same process. Most of our work is finished. There's just a few things I want to mention. One of them is to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Our new merch, the Sew with the Flow merch, we're really happy with the way it came out. So what we're going to do now is take this plant and bring it inside. Ideally, we want to bring it to a place that gets a little bit of light, but not a lot of light. Again, we don't want this to grow. We just want it to sit dormant. Also, when it comes to the temperatures. We want to bring it into an area like a garage. We want the temperatures to be about in the mid 50s to the mid 60s. We don't want it to get much warmer than that or the plants are going to start to grow a lot, which is what we don't want. And we don't want it to be like in the 40s or that could cause too much stress to the young plants. So get a spot where it could hang out in like the mid 50s to the 60s. That's the most ideal. A few weeks after you bring your plants inside, you might notice that there's some foliage growth, some leaves are growing on it. What I suggest you do is just pull those leaves off because we don't want the plant growing a lot. That's just going to be a spot for pests to kind of get harbored. We could just remove that foliage. That's why the temperatures are important though. If you keep your plant in a spot that's in like the mid 50s, you're not going to have much growth and it's also not going to stress the plant out too much. When it's in dormancy, it's not going to need much water either. So what I like to do is just come by and check the soil the top few inches. If it's relatively damp, then that's okay, but we don't want to be overwatering this and make the soil super soggy or that's just going to be a breeding ground for insects so and disease. So we definitely don't want that. Another thing I want to mention is when it comes to storing it, it's essentially just again going to be in dormancy so we don't need to add any fertilizer. This plant isn't going to need any fertilizer because we don't want it to grow. There's a little bit of fertilizer that's in the happy frog soil but we're not looking for growth. That'll happen in the spring. When spring comes and you want to bring this plant back outside, you really need to make sure that you harden this plant off. You don't want to get overexcited and bring the plant right outside and then it has a little bit of leaf growth and it gets cold outside and kind of dies back. So harden your plant off when you bring it out in the spring. Let it get slowly acclimated to those outside temperatures and then once the temperatures are heating up a bunch and the plant is used to them, then you can leave it outside. But you really want to bring them back outside slowly. These are summer plants and they're heat loving plants so we don't want to just rush them outside and have them end up dying with all the work we put into them. Through the winter, you want to go to your plants and make sure you're checking on them. Removing those leaves will help avoid pest issues but if you do see some pests, I just suggest you hit them with the safer soap. This will work good to remove a lot of the pests, but the most ideal thing is that the pests don't come. 
So that's kind of what we want to do is, and what we've done this whole thing is to prevent a lot of pest issues. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a lot of fun in this video. We hope you got value out of it. And we hope you guys actually try overwintering your peppers. I suggest doing it this way, even though it's a little more work because you can, again, use smaller pots, take up less space and you have less chance of pest issues. But I have overwintered peppers in the past where I just cut the peppers back and then take the whole pot inside. But then I did have some problems with like aphids and stuff. So what I'm trying to do this year is just prevent a lot of that from happening. Uh, me and Tuck wanted to mention a huge thank you to one of our new channel members, Shan Johnson. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. The season's starting to wind down, but we're always thinking about the future and we're thinking about how we can set ourselves up for next spring. And we think overwintering peppers is a great way to do that so you don't have to start your seeds all over again. This guy's always hanging out. He's uh, looking out for us. He had some peppers earlier when we were working on them, but now he's just kind of relaxing and just guarding the garden because he is the guardian of the garden. So spam some hearts down low if you love seeing Tuck in the videos. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We. Oui.